guys, welcome back to another Lady Savage video. Today is day one or part one of the six uh, video series that we're going to be doing on how to build your own workout, why you're doing certain things, so on and so forth. So today's video is going to be about warming up and cooling down, what's the importance, why you want to do it, and just a couple of ideas of what you could do to warm up and cool down. So let's talk about warming up first. The most important thing about warming up is it um, allows your body temperature to rise, it increases your blood flow, um, it reduces injury. Um, you really want your body to be you know, warmed up, um, your muscles to be warmed up, your tendons, joints, all of those things, you really want them to be well lubricated before you start lifting heavy and going after your workouts. Super, super important. If you're not someone who's good at implementing warmups, I would just go ahead and write down exactly what warmups you're going to be doing um, before the day begins. Um, so if you're writing out your workout, write down your, your warmup as well. There's a couple different types of stretching that you can do. There's static stretching and then there's dynamic stretching. I would 100% uh, wait to do any static stretching until after your workout when you're doing your cool down. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but when you're doing uh, your warm up, what you're going to want to do is a dynamic stretching. And that is where your body is in motion. So you're constantly doing a movement to get that body warmed up. You're not doing something like static where you're just holding that move, that movement um, and stretching out that muscle. You're goal is to warm up your body. It's not to stretch out your muscles. Um, a lot of people explain it like a rubber band, stretching out a rubber band, and then sometimes it, it loses its elasticity. You don't want to do that before a workout. You want to do it after a workout when you're cooling down. So a couple of things that you could use for dynamic stretches, um, there's a million of them. If you start to just Google dynamic stretches, there's going to be a bunch of different things. You can even pick what body part you're going to do, dynamic stretches for a back workout, for a leg workout, so on and so forth. And there will be a million of them that'll pop up for you guys. But I'll just share a couple of them that I enjoy doing um, and that are helpful. So there's like the leg pendulum swing where you're just literally swinging your leg back and forth. You can do, even do a little bit of a movement in your, um, your knee as you're also doing this, but this is really going to warm up your hip movement, your hip, um, joints, all of that. Um, so that's a really good one for lower body. The next one is going to be like a spinal rotation. If you're going to be doing anything to do with upper body or lower body, spinal rotation is going to be great because you're always going to be using your core. No matter what movement you're doing, you're always going to be tightening that core and all of your, your core muscles. So, uh, spinal rotations are really great. Just make sure that you're not going crazy swinging back and forth, just slow controlled, movements, you're not trying to do anything crazy during a warm up. And then the last one is just arm circles. This is great for a shoulder workout, a chest workout, buys, tries, anything upper body. Uh, this is just going to be really helpful to break up those, those muscles, get everything well lubricated, get those, those um, shoulders really working out well. Um, and then the other thing that you can do to really get warmed up before you may even start those dynamic stretches is just do a nice, easy, walk, maybe a real easy jog, maybe a couple of jump rope sessions, but nothing crazy. I wouldn't even suggest doing cardio before you do your lifting. So all you're really wanting to do is warm up your body and get that going. Now, cool downs are just as important as warm ups, and I will explain why. I was having a really big issue with um, some adrenal stuff, some cortisol issues, things like that, and I realized um, after working with an ind individual that I wasn't allowing my body to cool down after a workout. So I was going from this crazy intense workout to directly into work and I wasn't allowing my body to get out of that fight or flight and get into a steady state. So that is going to be super, super important. The whole system is going to realize, okay, we're done with the stress area, we're done um, stressing our body, and we're going to move forward on to eating a meal or, you know, working or taking a shower or whatever it is that you do after your workout. It's very important to have that cutoff point from the stress of a workout to the next part of your day. Um, another thing that cooling down does is it lowers your heart rate gradually. You don't want to just quit a workout and then walk out the door. 
you want your heart rate to lower gradually, you want your body temperature to lower again gradually, um, your breathing to lower gradually, nothing super all of a sudden or anything like that. So uh, cooling down also helps with, you'll get a pump in whatever muscle part that you're, uh, you're working, a big leg pump or biceps or whatever it is. And cooling down actually helps to relieve the, the blood from that area slowly as well. So you're not having a big um, blood pressure drop all of a sudden. So cooling down is super important. Now here's where you will use both dynamic stretching and static stretching. Uh, the dynamic, you can do the same ones that you use to warm up to cool down. And I would start with that dynamic. So your body just went from doing all these workouts. So use that momentum to just slowly ease into doing a little bit more static stretching. So finish your workout, do a little bit of dynamic stretches, which is still in that movement and then do some static stretches. And though that's really gonna help you to um, get a little bit more flexibility. Flexibility will help with further movements, with further exercises as well. So very important to do that as well. A couple of movements that you can use for uh, static stretching is things like the overhead tricep stretch. Um, with these movements, you're really gonna wanna hold them for anywhere from about 15 seconds to 60 seconds. Um, if it's, you know, a left and a right, do each one for 15 to uh, 60 seconds, depending on how you feel. So the overhead tricep stretch, um, like the seated butterfly is a really great one for those inner thighs. Um, and then just like a head to knee bend um, is also a really great one. You can do each one, uh, one side at a time with your knee bent, or you can just keep both of your legs straight and do it all at the same time. Um, again, holding those movements for an extended period of time, you really want to be gentle with this. You don't want to overextend yourself. You don't want to over, um, stretch. So make sure that you're just easing out of your workout. You're not trying to do anything super intense. If you want to do intense stretching, go do a yoga class. <laughs> um, but this is just really cooling your body down. Um, very important. And if it were me, Every time I work, work out, I would try to pick between three to four uh, warm up exercises and three to four cool down exercises to do um, that's going to aid in that body part that you're working on that day. So if you guys have any questions about warming up, cooling down, let me know and um, I'll do my best to answer those in the next video or in the comments below.